OK. All right. Um, so we have the law of sines. A over sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. And the best way I like to describe it, you know, when to know and to apply the law of sines, is just to look at it. And if you have one ratio, if you have A, a length, and it's, and it's opposite angle, then you know you can apply the law of sines. Does that kind of make sense? As long as we have one of these ratios and then another value, we know that now we can apply the law of sines. So simply, let's look at this, and let's just fill in what we have. Well, we have 8 over the sine of 36 degrees is equal to, now our only other value is with b. So we could say 5 over the sine of b. Now, we don't have anything with c, but ladies and gentlemen, we haven't really worked on how do you solve proportion with two equal signs, right? All it's saying is this is equal to this, which is equal to this. So any two of them that you pick are going to be equal to each other. So we don't need to include the c. We'll work on how to find c here in a second. But for right now, we don't need to worry about the c. We're just going to use this proportion to help us so solve for the sine of b. So when we have a proportion, does everybody remember what we do to solve your proportions? First step, so we need to find the value of b, uppercase b, the angle. Does everybody remember proportions? Well, I'm sorry? You could. I mean, we'll, I'm going to show you what to kind of evaluate. I, one thing, you've got to isolate the sine of b. So you've got to get sine of b off the bottom. So there's a couple ways you guys could do this. You could multiply sine of b on both sides, right? And then multiply by the reciprocal on both sides to get rid of this. Or a lot of times in this just generic fashion that you guys kind of like easily remembered, but was when you have a proportion, you can cross multiply, right? That's what you want to go through with the cross multiplication. So cross multiplication is kind of like a simpler step to getting everything done. So when I cross multiply, I now get 5 sine of 36 equals 8 times sine of b. Well, now, to isolate my sine of b, I need to divide by 8. So therefore, I say sine of b equals 5 sine of 36 degrees all over 8. All right? So now, um, let's go and spend some time. Where'd my calculator go? Oh, it's right here. So now, let's spend a little time and go through and actually evaluate what that value is going to be. So I take 5 times the sine of 36, and I'll divide that by 8. And therefore, I get the sine of b equals 0.3674. When I round it. Now, we still haven't found b, though. Does anybody remember what we do at this stage to go and find the value of b? Anything? Yeah, you've got to use the inverse of this function. So you're going to take this value, and now to find b, this says the sine of this angle b equals 0.3674. So what does b equal? Well, b equals the inverse sine b equals sine inverse of 0.3674. So now we've got to take the inverse sine of this value. And that's going to give us 21.55 degrees. So we can say b is going to equal 21.55 degrees. All right, so I'm just going to round it um, down to 100. So now I can say b is 21.55 degrees. Does everybody kind of follow me with that? Now we still haven't found anything with c, though. We need to find all the missing values of this triangle. Well, we're given two angles of a triangle, though. So once we know two angles of a triangle, can we find the third? Yeah, so we'll just do 180 minus 36 minus 21.55, and that's going to equal our C. Right? If you take 180 minus your other two angles, you're going to get C. So we take 180 minus 36 minus 21.55, and we get 122.45. So now we have a ratio. So now we have a value for C. So now we can go back and apply our law of sines. But we need to determine, do I want to use the ratio of A over sine of A or B over sine of B? And it doesn't really matter. I usually always like to make sure 
that I you know kind of go back to the one that's the simplest. It looks like A is pretty simple, A over sine of 36. So that's just the one I'm going to apply. But if you want to use your newfound value of B of sine of 21.55 degrees um, over the value of over under the value of five, then you can do that as well. But we'll just set up here. Uh, we'll have eight over sine of 36 equals C, which I do not know the value of, over the sine of 122.45 degrees. Does everybody see what I, how I just applied now again the same formula to use for here? So now again, we can cross multiply. And therefore, I get C times sine of 36 equals 8 times sine of 122.45 divided by sine of 36. And therefore, I get C equals, so I do 8 times the sine of 122.45 divided by the sine of 36. And I get 11.49 as I round. So we can see C equals 11.49. All right, and then we just kind of look at this, and does that kind of make sense? Is C the largest side length? Does it also have the largest angle? Yeah, right? So everything does kind of fit within the triangle. I'm not getting like 1,087 or 0.43, so the triangle makes sense, right? This is your largest angle, and it produces the largest side. Oh, yeah, only if it asks, because here, I'm, already, I'm just evaluating for the signs. So I just plug them in the signs, and that's what C equals. But over here, when I solve for B, it's, I'm not solving for uh, an angle. I'm solving for the sine of B. So to actually find the value of B, I have to take the inverse sign. So yes, when you're trying to find an angle, you're going to have to do, use the inverse. OK? And that's it.